Hi, this is Hobson Lane, uh, CISC 179 professor. Um, uh, introduction to Python. And in order to really be a professional Python programmer, you're going to need Python installed on your PC. Uh, so far, we've gotten away with just using RuneStone. We're going to take those training wheels off, wheels off so that you can run code on your local machine instead of in the cloud on a website uh, like RuneStone Academy. So Anaconda is that package, and if it's anaconda.com, Anaconda is another big snake, just like a Python, and um, that'll make it easy to remember. And so you're going to go to anaconda.com, you're going to hit free download, and then you're going to hit the download button. It should automatically give your operating system. If you're on Linux, you won't even need uh, this video probably to get it done. There's a single script, a single command you need to run in Linux, and it'll all be working instantly. You can even use the, the built-in Python for most Linux environments. But on Windows, you're kind of stuck with installing um, this package called Anaconda. Um, it's great for um, you to accept all the cookies. Uh, where is the download button? Uh, do, 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 do. So it uh, looks like you need, uh, because you're on Windows, you're going to have to avoid the, uh, the button doesn't actually work. And so you're going to have to hit to go here in order to download. And then eventually um, this will get you to the 64-bit graphical installer. Uh, that'll give you Python 3.11, which is the latest version of Python. Um, you can see it downloading here. And once that's open, we can I can click on it once, and I think that'll open it as soon as it's downloaded. Um, it's going to probably take a bit longer on your uh, machine. Uh, this is a pretty big file. Awesome. Looks like it might have downloaded, but let's give it a shot. Let's see if we can get that the one that we downloaded to work. Well, it looks like it is already loading it, and maybe that it was doing that download on its own. Okay, good. Uh, we've got the uh, Anaconda installer ready to go. So we just hit next on the very first thing. We got to accept the end user license agreement. This is one of the reasons why it wasn't too, too excited about having you do this because you don't want to. Uh, Python is completely open source, and there's no reason for you to have to sign up for any. Um, and we're just going to install it for just for you, um, just for the person that you're that's logged in currently on your Windows machine. Um, and then you're going to, it looks like it's going to take five or six gigabytes. So the default location is fine for where you're going to install it. It should be in your users directory with your username and then your, um, and then a, a small a lowercase Anaconda 3 because it's a uh, Python 3 and they just uh, named the folder Anaconda 3. So we hit next on that. Uh, we do want to create start menu shortcuts. We do want to add, this is the most important thing you'll do today. You need to uh, check on um, making sure that Anaconda 3 is in your path. Um, don't ignore that warning. And you want Anaconda to be your default Python for VS Code or PyCharm or your other IDEs, but we're going to be using Spider that's built into Anaconda. Uh, and we're going to um, and we're going to also uh, delete some uh, some unnecessary files once we're done. So um, it's like the installation is going to happen pretty quickly. Like in that users folder we talked about, there will be the Anaconda 3 folder. And inside of there, it was just working on a folder called Conda Meta. It looks like it's still um, preparing another transaction or finishing up. 
So if the, if the browser pops up for some reason on Windows, you're going to have to uh, close that window to get back to the your original window. It's in Alicia those directories and clearing the package cache. So that's what's it's going to delete a bunch of files right now to um, to save us some disk space. It says completed. So now we can hit the next button. Uh, it looks like you can also do this with Jupyter Notebooks. Um, we're going to launch the navigator. You can actually, I'm not going to do that at the moment. I'm going to let you. Um, you can do this when you when you're installing it. Um, uh, you can look at their getting started guide. I'm going to hit the the start menu, and then I'm going to look for Anaconda, and then we're going to pin that to your tab, so you can always find it. You want the Anaconda Navigator. Um, this will just make it a little easier to find everything else that's installed with Can Anaconda. You have the Spider text editor that's used for editing code. Um, this is what you'll use to create applications. Once Anaconda comes up, the Anaconda launcher comes up, we should be able to see it down here in your toolbar. I don't see it as a shortcut. Okay, there it is. So we've got Anaconda, the green circle. You wanna pin that to the taskbar and now you're good to go. So you should be able to find everything you want. There's those Anaconda notebooks. Those are really handy for scientists who don't want to mess around with programming Python, but do have some bits of Python they want to run, uh, usually from scientific packages or machine learning packages or um, data manipulation. So um, I'm not going to, we don't want to sign into Anaconda Cloud. This is one of the um, difficulties of installing proprietary software. All of those are dark patterns, but we can get around those pretty easily. And so there's two things you want to be looking for here. There's this Qt console, which gives you a Python prompt. Um, this is all you need this week. Longer term, you're going to probably want to get familiar with Spider, uh, which is an, a text editor for creating Python files. We're going to launch the Qt console and make sure that that works. Also called IPython. Um, this will give you access to a few bash commands that are really important for navigating around um, because IPython adds to Python a few what's called bash or born again shell commands. Um, um, I'm going to only, I'm going to, well, I'm not going to even um, bother you with those now. We'll, we may talk about those later. Um, but from this prompt, um, you can see we have an input prompt. It's pretty similar to what you saw in RuneStone. Uh, I'm sorry, we can't. We, we want to do a, a print command and hello world. And if you needed to, I think in this exercise, there are some import statements. I think one of the first, or I guess it was the, the previous week, we, we imported the random package. And you can do things like random.rand to generate a number. I think if you just run it with, oops, looks like we need to tell it how many. Oh no, it has no attribute name, Miranda. This is another really beautiful thing about uh, IPython. You can hit the tab key if you don't remember uh, the commands. Obviously uh, I've forgotten how to generate a random number. It looks like I have two different, or several different things I can do. I can generate a random range across a range of numbers. And this works similar to, um, to the range function. Uh, let's see if it, if it gets anywhere close to 10. Uh, if we run this several times, I'm hitting the up arrow in order to repeat that command many times. And you can also do a for loop, for i in range. And we're gonna, we're gonna use a regular range uh, method or function to generate, let's generate a thousand random. Let's see if any of them are greater than nine. Uh, random dot rand range. I'm just trying to understand. I'm just exploring to see what this rand range does. I want to see if it'll ever generate a, t a value of 10. 
Uh, you can probably guess the answer to my, oh, let's see, I'm, I'm doing, I want to see if that's, I want to only print out true. Uh, and actually, I'm going to use an if statement. So if I'm going to say if that's greater than nine, just to make it, I'm going to only print out one line. Uh, this poor style, let's put some spaces around that equal sign so it's easier to read. Python's one of the most uh, easiest to read languages, programming languages in the world. It was designed that way to look a little bit like English. If random rand range 10 is greater than nine, we're going to print. Wow, that's big. Oops, let's do that. We need to use double quotes. That's another exercise this week. Uh, whenever you, or last week, I think it was, uh, where you need to use double quotes or uh, in order to print anything that contains an apostrophe. Wow. So out of a thousand numbers, it never rolled a 10. So that you should, you should be, uh, shouldn't be surprised about that. Let's see how often it happens though. If I say, if it's greater than, oops, if, I, if it's greater than, um, well, let's see. To solve this, if, if we really did want a number between one and 10, or zero and zero and 10, we would need to put 11. But if we want it to be between one and 10, we need to start with one over the left. Otherwise, it's going to always start at zero. Everything in Python starts at zero. All the indexing, whenever you're trying to uh, select an element in a list, the first element in the list is labeled as zero, the zeroth element. Uh, and so on. But if you want a, a number between 1 and 10, inclusive, meaning both 1 and 10 are included in the range of possible values, let's see how many out of 1,000 those are. And I'm going to show you the accumulator pattern to actually count those up. And we're going to put, um, oops, we need to do that. We need to for the accumulator pattern to work, you need whatever you're accumulating in, the variable you're accumulating in, you want to put that at the very beginning. Let's say uh, big num, uh, let's see, big count. So we're going to count up the number of big numbers. And so that's going to trigger only right when we're printing out this thing. And I'm going to show you another trick. We're going to put that, we're just going to append that as an integer. And let's make it a little easier to read. Put a couple spaces in the string before we put big count in that list. And it looks like we haven't done one last thing. You probably see a bug. I'm going to do it like this equals big count plus one. So the stuff on the right hand will run first of the equal sign, and then whatever the value is there will be shoved into the variable big count. And then we've got big count increasing by one. And so that should give us a count of all the ones that are uh, bigger than zero, bigger than two. Oops, I went back to the wrong one. I used the uh, range of, I think it was the wrong range again. That was a bug and we fixed it this time. Which kind of bug was that? Is that a syntax bug, a logic bug, or a semantic bug, do you think? Is it a design bug or? Uh, oh, it looks like it doesn't look like I'm allowed to concatenate an integer. That's another bug. And that is definitely a value error is almost certainly a syntax error. The previous one was a semantic error because that was a misunderstanding that I just had. Uh, I'm going to also show you one last trick. So there were 101, almost one tenth of the numbers were 10. That's about what we want. We want uh, that's that means that it is generating something that's pseudo random that is pretty close to what would happen um, if you um, if you got had average luck on rolling dice trying to get tens. In this case, they got 101 of them, but. Uh, Let's try again. Let's see if that's always the case. That time we got exactly what you would expect from the probability. If you've taken a probability cast, you would expect to get 100 tens out of a thousand rolls um, of a dice that's 10 sided. So if you ever play D&D, &D, you might be familiar with 
this concept. You can get lucky and sometimes you get unlucky. So we got 101 once, we got 96 another time. And that's it for learning about random number generators and installing Anaconda. And I'm sure I've taken up way too much of your time already. Uh, have fun. Um, your goal this week is to make sure you can run uh, Jupyter QT console or any IPython console that you have on your computer and be able to run some code. Uh, this will help you get started on your project, which is to build a Pi file uh, containing a text adventure game that you can run and play. Uh, we'll talk about that more later. Let's...